Okay. To me, this is the progression in terms of how you teach vision. I think you have to have a pre-snap look so you can anticipate what could happen. There's a post-snap look that confirms what is happening. And then you have to go through this order in terms of know what to look at, number one, your initial read, know when to look at it in terms of your progression, and know why you're looking at it, because that's going to tell us where the seam and the defense is. Another key point is your eyes got to work independently of your feet at the snap of the ball, okay? That is important. Our eyes and our feet are not always traveling in the same direction. So our eyes are gonna focus on the pre-snap picture and the initial read. And at the snap of the ball, our feet are gonna take us to our landmark. And you should be able to run your footwork and your course to the line of scrimmage with your eyes closed. You shouldn't have to have your eyes open to run your zone steps or to run your power or counter steps or to run your lead steps. So just having the understanding that my eyes and my feet work independently at the snap of the ball. My feet are going to the landmark, my eyes are going to my read. It's the quarterback's job to seat me the ball. My eyes aren't going to the exchange. Okay, the second part of that is understanding two blockers working in combination on two defenders. And when I say two defenders, I'm talking about a down lineman and I'm talking about a linebacker at the second level. Whether it's a zone combination and the combinations work into a front side backer or whether it's a, a gap combination and the combination block is working to a backside backer a la power. But if there's two blockers and two defenders, then there's really three gaps where the ball can go. The ball can go inside the combination block. The ball can go outside the combination block. Or the ball could split the combination block. So once again, we're just looking at combination blocks. It doesn't matter what run play we're running, but we've got these two linemen working there, and we've got these two linemen working there. And everything is going to be predicated on the position of the linebackers pre-snap. And then as I take my post-snap picture, I'm going to confirm what's happening, and then it's going to be my job to put the ball in the open gap. So if this defender plays this B gap, this defender plays the A gap, right now we've got a B gap player and a D gap player, this guy is going to fit somewhere. If he ended up staying backside, then the ball should enter here. If this guy ends up coming over the top of this combination, then the C gap is open and then here comes a safety and here comes a back and let's go play football. But all we're doing is working off understanding combination blocks and putting the ball in the open seam of the defense. Okay, we talked about a little bit in terms of what differentiates the scheme. Okay, we're going to talk zone schemes now, okay, and go into that world. All right, from the read of the zone scheme, and everybody does things different in their zone world, I'm going to explain why I do what I do, and then I'm going to share uh, some other ways to run it and read it and why I don't like those ways, okay? So once again, I've, I've already talked to you about combination blocks, two linemen versus two defenders, a down lineman and an off the ball guy. So when we have a true combination or a zone, we're going to read the play side linebacker spot off either the center guard or the guard tackle zone based on the play. If that linebacker does what I call fast flows, then that ball should end up behind that zone combination and behind that linebacker. If that line, so that's the left diagram. The middle diagram is the linebacker fast flowing. The ball is going to start to come behind that combination block, but the inside guy in the combination block is able to capture the down lineman. So now that ball is going to split the zone. And then the last diagram or the diagram on the right is the linebacker staying behind the zone combination and the ball stays front side. So, so when I say to you, two blockers, two defenders, three gaps, that's what I mean. The ball could get in front of the zone, the ball could split the zone, or the ball can go behind the zone. It's all going to be based off the floor of the play side linebacker number one. And we'll go through the whole checklist. And we'll get this checklist from behind um, because it'll give us our pre-snap and our post-snap pictures.
All right. So we're running a weak zone. So the zone plays going to the left. Okay. We've got the tackle by himself on the wide, wide five technique out there, really nine technique out there. We've got the center and guard working their single block to the left backer. We've got the right guard and the right tackle working that four eye technique to the to the A gap linebacker. And then the tight end on the backside is going to be in a, a zone with the ability to sift to whoever becomes the C gap if there's a C gap threat. The pre-snap picture for the back here is fast, fast. What I mean by that is the left linebacker is an already play side in front of the center guard single block. And the middle backer in the A gap is already in front of the B block on the backside. So the pre-snap picture is fast, fast. And then when the ball snapped, I'm going to confirm it from a post-snap standpoint. And then I'm going to go attack the open gap in the defense being prepared to handle the extra defender, run support fender, who's going to show up at some point. Okay, so we'll, we'll see this one from behind again, talk through the same thing. But really what I want you to pay attention is on the with the front side linebacker, how he starts the flow with the course of the back. And then he tries the back door, the zone block, and the ball carrier does a nice job of escaping out of the open gap. So, you know, technically you'd say that that front side linebacker should be a B gap player unless they stunt the, the two eye out. He should be the B gap player. Um, but as this as this unfolds, as you watch it out, we do a really good job of setting the linebacker up and still getting the ball outside a linebacker who tried to come back inside. This is going to be a, a really easy pre-snap picture and post-snap confirmation. Because as you, as you look at this particular picture pre-snap, you've got a fast linebacker and a slow linebacker in terms of where the zones are working. And that's a ball that should end up splitting both linebackers. And, and, and it does, as you'll see.